Hello, this is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, back from the overflow room, here to talk to you about Howard Hansen's Romantic Symphony. Now, we all love the Romantic Symphony, right? It's romantic. I mean, what's not to love? But it was composed for the 50th anniversary of the Boston Symphony, that amazing year that gave us Hindemith's Concert Music for Strings and Brass, Stravinsky's Symphony of Psalms, Respighi's Metamorphoseon, Roussel's Third Symphony, Honegger's First Symphony, Prokofiev's Fourth Symphony. I mean, it was, it was quite, quite the year. And Hansen's Romantic Symphony was one of those celebratory pieces that Kusevitsky and the BSO commissioned. And it is romantic in so many ways. The fascinating thing about it, in my opinion, is that it encapsulates all of the defects of romantic music in 28 minutes. I mean, I'm joking a little bit there, but I mean, it really kind of does. What are the things that people dislike about romantic music? It's repetitious. It's formally dysfunctional. It's excessively long. And this is an achievement. It's hard to make something sound excessively long that's only 28 minutes long. But it, you know, you could argue that it does. It's harmonically cloying. It's, uh, you know, the list goes on. It's maudlin. It's, you know, emotionally trashy. Now, you could just as easily turn this whole thing around and say all of those things are qualities, not deficits. And in a sense, they are, because Hansen is evoking a style, and he does it by writing what is really just this in this compact little three-movement shape, sort of the ultimate piece of romantic music. It has, for example, a motto theme, and here is the motto theme. You know, just three notes, do, do, do. Couldn't be any easier, could it? Comes back constantly, you hear it all the time. Then it has the big, yummy, luscious, romantic theme. And here that is. Now, we know that tune, and in between the two, there's a first subject, which is kind of spacey and heroic sounding. It goes da, 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 da. I could play it, but it's more fun to sing it. And then there's this sort of wandering transition thing. You know, all romantic music has wandering transition things in the middle of it. And then you get the luscious second tune. And then it has a fairly non-developing development section that winds up with the luscious second theme and the thing ends. Then you've got a slow movement. Now the slow movement has an absolutely luscious opening tune. Here's a little bit of that.
followed by a return to the yummy romantic theme from the first movement, which is introduced by the motto. So you get everything you just heard. <laughs> you basically get to hear again, only with another tune thrown in. All right, and then you come to the finale. And the finale is a riot because the finale is is only like seven minutes long, but it just packs all this stuff into it. It begins with the first subject from the first movement, just adapted into a sort of major key happy version. Here's what it sounded like back in the first movement. See, I didn't play it then, so I could save it for now. Here it is. <laughs> And now here's the finale version. And then, you know, that kind of runs along and does its thing and you get that wandering transition section again is also developed. And then there's a middle section that isn't related to anything. And it 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 winds up with the return of the first movement opening subject, exactly the way we heard it in the first movement, only even louder and more vigorous. And that leads to the apotheosis of the big yummy tune with pounding timpani underneath and a coda, which is sweetly sentimental with solo strings. I mean, you know, you just want to cry for about two seconds and then you're done crying. And then a coda. And the coda is, of course, the motto. But it's a jazzy version of the motto. It's ba 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 da 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 I mean, the last word, though, because it's romantic, it always has something else to say. You know, romantic music never shuts up. It even a 28 minute long romantic piece, Hanson manages to suggest that it never wants to quit because the last thing we hear is the opening of the slow movement, which we haven't heard since the slow movement. Here's that little bit. <laughs> I mean, what's not to love, right? It's it's fantastic. And it's been recorded, you know, half a dozen times maybe. I have four of them here because the, these are the four best ones, really. And, you know, there are no bad recordings of the Romantic Symphony. I mean, it was, it was Hansen's signal achievement to write the one piece of romantic music that requires nothing by way of interpretation. It absolutely plays itself. I mean, I've done it in community orchestras. We've done it. Uh, Hansen's own Eastman Rochester Symphony was a student orchestra. It sounds fabulous. No matter how you play it, who does it, you could play it upside down, underwater. It wouldn't matter. The piece is foolproof. Of course, there are fools who will demonstrate that it's you know, it can be ruined, but it it just isn't. I, it, the thing just goes, and because it's so repetitious, <laughs> you know, there's not a lot you have to know about it. It's the same tunes over and over again, and, it, you know, as long as everybody does what they're supposed to do when they're supposed to do it, it's going to sound fine. So let's let's talk about the recordings. They're not all the same. That's not to say that the interpretations are all the same. What it is to say is that it really doesn't make any difference what anyone does. Here's Hanson's own, right? Ooh, there's Hanson's own with the Eastman Rochester Orchestra, which he manages to sound remarkably yummy, given the fact that they had a small string section and it was a student orchestra. This is a Mercury Living Presence recording. It's exceptionally vivid, perhaps a touch screechy. There's a little bit of hiss, you know, in the sound, but, you know, it's, it's Hanson. It's wonderful. It's coupled with his 
his Nordic symphony, his first symphony, which is a good work that no one ever does, and the remarkable Song of Democracy. Now, this was the Song of Democracy, the first in a projected trilogy that was supposed to have, you know, songs of different governmental forms. There was the Song of Democracy, the Song of Authoritarianism, and then the Song of Anarchy. That was going to be the finale, but he only lived to complete the Song of Democracy. What a shame. I was looking forward to the other two. Next, Leonard Slatkin with the St. Louis Symphony. This is the slowest of all the performances and therefore the most romantic, you might want to say. But slow in this symphony is the difference between 28 and 30 minutes, so it really makes no difference at all. This is coupled with a superb, superb Barber Violin Concerto with Elmar Oliveira. And so, you know, if that's what you want as a coupling, you can get this and be very, very, very happy. It's excellent, absolutely excellent. Next, Eric Kunzel and the Cincinnati Pops. This is as fast as Hanson's own. Hanson's is a very quick performance, especially the slow movement, which I think could use a little more sugar. You know what I mean? It needs a little uh, to be a little bit more relaxed and yummy. And, you know, Hanson is a very unsentimental conductor. So is Eric Kunzel. It's a very zippy, straightforward performance, but marvelously played by the Cincinnati Pops. And it contains... It's an all Hanson disc. Also, you've got the suite from Marymount, his opera that nobody cares about, but which had some pretty orchestral music, and his fanfare for the Signal Corps that sounds just like what the title suggests. And finally, the Bold Island Suite. This is a premiere recording. I don't know why it was never recorded. It's, it's a very substantial work. It's in three movements. It's almost as long as the Romantic Symphony. I mean, the first movement's shorter, but it's very colorful. It has three movements. They're titled, let's see what they're titled here, Birds of the Sea, and then Summer Seascape, and then the singularly modest and unpretentiously named God in Nature. All right. But it's very pretty. It's very nice music, and it's well worth hearing. So I think this disc is worth getting for that reason alone. But, however, the best recording of the Romantic Symphony is Gerard Schwartz with the Seattle Symphony. This also comes with his Lux Eterna and Mosaics, two superb other pieces by Hansen. And this romantic, it gets everything right. It's it's a little zippier than Hansen in the finale, which really works, and also a little bit maybe in the first movement, just a hair, but just that teeny bit more relaxed in the slow movement. This is where the musical examples that I have played you came from. It's on Naxos. It used to be on Delos, but Naxos took it over, thank God. And now it's out there for all of us to enjoy forever, and it's splendid. So if you're interested in Hansen's Romantic Symphony, you can get any of these. You'll be perfectly happy. I would get Schwartz if that's what you want, and for the other works too, because it's another very good all Hansen disc, but you can't go wrong no matter how you slice it. And remember, we all need a little romantic in our lives once in a while, right? So why not Hansen's? Because not only is it a little romantic, you get it over with in 28 minutes, and for most of us, that will probably be more than enough. Keep on listening, folks. Thank you very much.